There is different levels of photographers, the way they see natural light. You can see natural light the way a regular person does, like, look, there's the light, there's the sun. And a really well-trained photographer can really study where is the light bouncing from, what is the surfaces that the, the light is bouncing from, what is happening in the circumstances, that's why I call this circumstantial light. How is the light behaving with the environment? And then, where is like the ideal spot for me to stand as a photographer and for the model or the subject to stand. That's a very different story than going to the park and taking pictures in, in front of the pretty fountain. That's a very different story. One took me years to learn. The other one I knew the first day I picked up a camera. That's the big difference. A lot of times, my, you know, my wish for this class is that a lot of times photographers begin their careers with natural light because you can see it, it's predictable. You, you see what you're gonna get and you stick to it. But then, they kind of never really get out of it. It's kind of like they stay there, they kind of go a little higher, and then they kind of maybe a little bit, and then they kind of stay in that range, and then they, they, they do um, a lot of filters and Photoshop to make it look special. And I want to re, 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 re I can't say that word. I want to say something again. I don't have no issues with Photoshopping or Lightrooming photos. I do it all the time. I'm just saying, if you're wishing to improve as an artist, as a photographic artist, improve on the camera side. And also then you can apply your Lightroom stuff and your Photoshop and everything you do um, later. But that's like a secondary thing. A lot of times we, we take our photos and then we're like, nah, nah, whatever. And then we go into Capture One, Lightroom or Photoshop and we're like, oh man, check this out. I totally made it look killer. And that's not the best if you want to progress in your career, actually pay your bills with this industry, that's probably not going to be the best winning formula. What's going to happen is this, and I truly believe this because it's happened to me and it's happened to a lot of people that I've taught around the world. Here's what's going to happen if you do that. If your photography is good or average, and you are, and you Lightroom and you Photoshop everything, and your photography is just nice, it's not expect spectacular, it's just nice, you have a lot of competition to deal with. Everyone in your neighborhood, everyone in your town, everyone in your city can compete with you because everyone has access to those Lightroom presets, but nobody has access to your brain. Your brain is your intellectual property. Your brain is what separates you. Lightroom presets and Photoshop tricks are probably not going to separate you. You can learn those, you can buy them, you can just apply them. So recession or no recession, economic downfall or total economic boom, who cares? There's always gonna be people willing to pay for great photography because everybody wants great photography for themselves. It's an emotional purchase. You're taking photos of their children. You're taking photos of somebody's wedding. You're taking portraits for their, for their corporate uses. And you're shooting for designers that spend 10 years of their lives creating dresses and you're photographing them. You screw up, you don't make the dresses look good, you're never gonna get hired again. And no Lightroom preset will save you. You see what I mean? You need to be a photographer first. And that is kind of like the message that I, I've been trying to deliver throughout this, light, um, this Picture Perfect Lighting class.